It's like the Press Magazine Michael here with Michael Vandenham, our winner at Major Japan Taylor Day Day 2. Nice Go ahead and tell me about that win. Well, you know what, after Gage won by a good 40 seconds on us yesterday, my goal was just to hold him as long as possible, but already by lap 2, he was starting to push a gap on me and couldn't do anything about it, but all of a sudden with one lap to go, he was looking good up until one to go, maybe had 20 seconds on me, but with one to go, all of a sudden my team manager, who, who must have gotten pulled a lap before, was ripping around the course being like, dude, dude, he's cracking, he's cracking, you're gaining on him, and he was right. Every section I was closing down five seconds or something. Um, by top of the run up, maybe he maybe only had 10 seconds. By the far side of the course, he only had five. And I started to think I could actually catch him. So I decided on the last time through the pits just to run, run the bike I had, not pit, passed him through that section and just put in a big dig. And um, obviously he was cracked. Uh, he, he had done a big race. And I think, I think it was one lap too much for Gage today. And I, uh, I guess maybe being a couple years older than him, I had a few more minutes of racing in my legs. That was a big risk, not pitting at the last lap, especially right before the mud. Would... Yeah, I, I was missing a bunch of my gears, but sometimes it's one of those things if you can get into the rider's head that you're still going strong, and if you can pass them going fast, sometimes that's enough just to, to crack them mentally. You know, it doesn't sound like a gentlemanly way to race, but cycling's as much about beating someone with the head as it is the legs. Well, this course was definitely a mental race as much as a physical. Yeah, my, I credit my race today to just not giving up. Um, there was no point when I, you know, I, I had thought he had won, but on a course like this, 20 seconds just isn't that much time. So at no point had I had I given up. I was still pushing as hard as I could. And lots of races that doesn't work out, but this time it did. This time, um, me being able to hold that gap to only 20 seconds made all the difference in the end. And despite being in second position for some time, you're riding on your own for a lot of the yeah. race. What was that like mentally? Um, it's just one of those things like you just keep on pushing, set set little markers. I like to set markers all over the course like I'm going to go hard through this section, I'm going to go hard up the hill, I'm going to go hard up the run up and I'll use and you know, use the next section to recover. And it's just about breaking the race into little sections and going as hard as you can for those little bits. What was the part that you were eyeing is the hardest thing that you really needed to get right in this course. That big bog after the finish. It was just, it was either so much running or so much grinding riding. And I was running at most laps. I'm a fairly comfortable runner, I'd say. But that last lap, I, I put in a big effort and rode it. But that was the hardest section. It's just big, slow, turning over the gear over and over and over again. And it's easy to, to lose momentum and get sucked into that mud. Can you compare the way that the mud was today versus yesterday? Um, it was soupier and more peanut buttery today. I think there was, in the top section, there was more traction and you could ride more stuff by that bottom section, the swamp, or whatever it is. I think it was harder. It was a lot less riding and a lot more running. And then, of course, as Canadian national champion, I have to ask you, how did you end up here? So this is obviously, Team Trailer, um, our team is a, sort of a hybrid between Canadians and Americans. Dylan, the manager, is based out of Oklahoma. So we pick the races that Dylan can go to a lot of times. And I, I like traveling to different cities. I have never, I've never been to Indianapolis. I've, I've done CXLA before. I've, you know, I've spent a bunch of time in New England. So I like this, one of the cool things about Cross is being able to travel. So it's cool to be able to see a different part of the country. And we've seen that for next year there's going to be a different venue for Canadian Nationals and there's going to be four more UCI races in Canada. Yeah, that's right. We have, as to my knowledge, I, I maybe you can fact check me, we have the, our first ever C1 in, uh, in Toronto next year. That's awesome. It's, it's really great to see the Canadian scene growing so much. And I think we've seen our riders step up too. Um, Christelle, our national champion, Christelle Ferrier Bruno won yesterday in Supercross. Uh, obviously, Megaly Rochette was fifth last year at Worlds. We have a junior from last year, Gunnar Holmgren, was getting top tens in Europe, another one. Um, you know, we just have a bunch of really good riders coming up the pipeline, and I'm really excited to see the, the Canadian scene grow like this. I hope when my career's done, you know, I'm never gonna win a Girls' Cup, but I hope that I can sort of like show some of these riders the path that you can go to Europe and you can be successful at the North American level. And I hope they can take that and sort of build on that and, and far surpass my own, my, my achievements. I want to see a Canadian, you know, getting those top fives at World Cups and at Worlds. That would be amazing.
Yeah, that certainly would be a neat thing to see. Yeah. And of course, a win today is nothing to, to yeah, thank put you. down either. My first win is national champion, so it's really exciting. That is. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you.